So this session is a workshop, so ends on. Um, so having the stream on one screen and uh, an open browser on the other would be good to do the exercise or follow with me exactly what I'm doing if you want to. Uh, nothing to install. Everything is provided as a web tool. Boom, boom, boom. All right. I will wait for just a couple more people to join and I will start. All right, I saw that Jessica poke the attendees. It's starting. Okay, two more minutes and I will go. We do have time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One minute. All right then, okay, it's time, let's get started. Okay, so good evening everybody and thank you for attending this uh, workshop. So as the name stated, it's a workshop. So I expect you to do some kind of exercises and hands on with me. Um, so housekeeping, I can see the chat, what I'm doing, the hands on. So if you do have question, you can ask there, I can stop and answer question live. You don't have to install anything. All tools uh, will be provided in web-based mode. So you can run this workshop from any laptop, um, any operating system, no prerequisite. So I'm Cédric Lundven, and I'm leading the developer advocacy team at Datastax. So Datastax is the company behind the NoSQL database uh, Cassandra. And as advocate, we are running some training, teaching, building some reference application, do some support and public speaking like today. This is my day job uh, during weekends and at nights. I'm an open source developer, kind of Java geek. Uh, and I created seven years ago a framework called FF4J for feature flag for Java. Uh, the purpose of this small framework is to enable or disable part of your application at runtime with no installation. Um, also, uh, just uh, it's funny. Uh, I used to work for a company uh, who is now leading the, the field for API management solution. And we'll do a couple of uh, talks as well today um, for the API days, uh, Helsinki. Okay, so uh, today I will uh, do some kind of a follow-up of uh, a talk that Vigilardi may have uh, done a couple of minutes ago. Um, just to make you use uh, Stargate. But if you did not uh, know what is Stargate, I will take 
no more than 10 minutes to explain you what it is and what is the purpose. And then we will get rolling and uh, build those modern data apps with the gateway for multimodal data APIs. So I will explain what it what it looks like. Okay, so um, you know when people need to access the database, you can ask yourself three questions. As developer, do you like to learn new query languages? Um, you already have SQL and pretty happy with SQL. Um, you have to know REST. And if I told you now for every single database, you need to learn a new languages, CQL, Cassandra query language, N1QL, GQL, Cypher, Gremlin, and all the stuff. You know, this is not what you want to do. You simply want to have your JSON and interact with the JSON, get, put, uh, search, and that's, that's it. You also would like to work with uh, your object. If you're working with the um, object related, object programming model. So you want to do object mapping and you don't have to really focus on how the data is stored at the data level. Speaking of which, data stored at the data level, okay. Um, what about the physical data model? It's even worse. You don't care. You simply want an interface, rest if possible, and try to interact with that. Why that? Well, that's you. Now think about people in charge of the databases, the operator, people in charge of the health check. You don't want to allow the developers to access the database directly and do some stupid things like uh, advanced procedure, um, store procedure, or even uh, you know long SQL queries. You would like to be able to allow, grant only certain queries the queries you know that won't eat your performance and your database. So if you can have some kind of proxy on top of your database just to protect and only allow uh, the good patterns, this is what we would like to do. Okay, we do have developers, we do have operators, and when those two meet each other, you know, daily meeting, weekly meeting, it's like, yeah, yeah, it's working. DevOps, DevOps, yeah. <laughs> in theory, it's DevOps, but you know, when you are in charge of the ops, you really ask your developer to test more, maybe to go into production. And developers are like, yeah, but you know, it's working on my laptop, so it should work on production, you know. Okay, so Stargate is a gateway, but not an API gateway on top of existing API. Uh, if you think about API management and the industry of API management as of today, API management is a kind of proxy on top of existing services, providing you technical features, authentication, throttling, uh, monitoring, such. Here I'm talking to you about data gateway. Some component you will install on your architecture on top of the database, and it will open and expose APIs for you. Now, on top of Stargate, you can bring back your API management system if you wish. But as Stargate is open source, you can probably uh, imagine some kind of gateway with both features, uh, the data part and uh, all the API management features. Today, let's focus on the data gateway, Stargate gateway. Stargate makes it easy to use a database for any application workload by adding plugin and mostly APIs. So which APIs? Well, multiple flavors of API. So first, REST API, okay, go to, uh, no, <laughs> no brainer, you need, a, you need REST, I give you REST. But not only, here we are dealing with uh, data-oriented services, so it's pretty cool to also provide GraphQL API. You know, GraphQL fit the use case when you want to limit the bandwidth, like mobile application, uh, um, and anything that needs as speed as uh, as more speed as possible. Also, which is neat with GraphQL is you can simply build the re the request you would need, and uh, GraphQL will do the aggregation composition if you need to. JSON uh, gRPC is coming. Okay, but you know what? You will try that uh, before the end of the hour. Okay, so. 
Stargate is a gateway, is a proxy on storage. So this gateway uh, has some upper level and um, with API extension. So it's modular. You, today, there are three flavors of APIs available. And at the storage level, you also have multiple persistence extension. And same, as of today, we do have three uh, available persistent extension. But it's open source, and we expect more people in the future to create more persistent extension and more API ex extension. The idea is really to introduce some loose coupling between data and the API. So what's there? So for the persistence, as of today, we are using Apache Cassandra 3.11, 4.0, or DSC 6.8, that, that's as is. And for the API extension, there's REST, GraphQL, JSON, and the existing uh, natural language of Cassandra, CQL, Cassandra Query Language. So this Stargate uh, is open source, stargate.io. You can go there, go to GitPod, GitHub, check whatever you like, totally open. Um, and Let's make you, I want, I want you to use that today. So let's get started with the end zone. You know, I told you 10 minutes theory and even not 10 minutes, let's get into end zone right now. So I told you, you won't have to install anything today. We will use Cassandra, REST, Document API, GraphQL API and it will be all web-based. So first, what you need is the instance of the underlying database. So this Cassandra database. I don't want you to install Cassandra. And so we will use uh, Astra, astra.datastack.com, which is a managed services of Cassandra. Cassandra is a service in the cloud. And there, there is a free tier. So you will register then and start using the service, nothing to pay. It's a serverless database and you do have 25 bucks per month, which is about 5 million queries a month without paying anything. So Astra does have the Cassandra managed services and a bunch of APIs on top of that, REST, GraphQL, SQL. Guess what? It's Stargate embedded in the system. All right, so let's get running. For today, I want you to go to GitHub, so I will copy the link in the chat over here. Everybody go to um, GitHub and let's see what we will do for today. First things to do is to create the Cassandra instance, Astra instance. Okay, so go to astra.datastacks.com and sign in. Okay, so. This is what it looked like, astra.datastack.com. Here I go. So you can sign in with your GitHub account or Google, or you can create a new account. So I do already have one. I will authenticate. OK, all right. So this is what it looks like. I will first create a database. So there is documentation on the Astra platform explaining you how to create a database. And it's super easy. It's go create database button, provide a database name. So I will use FreeDB because this is what is proposed in the tutorial and a key space name. So key space is like a schema in the Oracle world. This is where you will store uh, a group of tables. And there are some uh, features at the key space level, how much time the data is replicated, um, authentication and um, privileges. So let's use, I will create space name free. Um, let's use Europe. I'm based in Paris, so boom, let's go for that. And let's start. So as you can see, uh, it is pay you go. I did not provide any credit card. And until I did not use these 
uh, 25 bucks, it will be totally free and only then it will uh, just uh, park, meaning I cannot do more requests. So look at that, my database is now pending. It will take up to three minutes to make this DB started. Remember, we are starting a Cassandra database. Cassandra is the distributed NoSQL database. And even on this free tier, we are starting for you three nodes. So we need sometimes to start three machine, install Cassandra three nodes. So pending, then initializing. And as soon as the DB becomes um, active, we can go. So this workshop is also a self-service. As you can see, it's all written step-by-step step what to do. So I will simply follow the tutorial and fix the tutorial eventually. <laughs> and if you can tell me that the database has been created for you. Let's go. We do have time. We do have time. We are small crew uh, today. So let's make sure that you can run the samples. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I told you about three minutes for this free tier. So Jesper is <laughs> waiting like me. Come on, say like, be patient. Don't try to do refresh. I keep doing refresh. It could be there. Okay, now it's active. Should have switched to active without how to refresh. Yeah, so, um, Jesper, tell me when you are ready and I will move on. I don't want to lose anybody. So if you join late, uh, we are going to this GitHub repo. I share the link on the chat with you all. First things we did is to create an Astra instance. We want to use that Stargate data gateway. So we need a database. I don't want you to install anything. So let's uh, start a Cassandra in the cloud and the service is called Astra. I went to astra.dallastax.com and I uh, use this free tier, follow the doc. But that's really, really just two fields <laughs> to fill. And um, <laughs> and should be good to go. Okay, initializing, you know, as you can see, Jasper, I did some kind of hard refresh. I was surprised after two minutes, I didn't have my DB yet.
And yes, if you do have a question, ask me. We are not in a hurry. I would like you to have the DB ready because as I told you, in Astra, you not only have the DB, but also the gateway ready to go. Okay, two more minutes and I will start. Okay, maybe during the time it's initializing as well for you. I just want to show you what it looks like once it has been initialized. So you can see how many read and write requests has been performed, the storage used, the data transferred, and the cost. And we all love when the cost is zero. It's a serverless and the, five, the 35 first bucks as totally free. You did not provide any credit card when you sign in. This is the region we are using. And as you can see, there is S, it's a plural. Cassandra is a distributed database. We have created for you three nodes and all those three nodes are on GCP Europe REST because this is what I pick. This is my cluster ID. And I created one key space, which is uh, similar to Oracle schema. This is a, a kind of a group of tables. Okay, I can see the health. So there is a Grafana DB, not Grafana DB, Grafana dashboarding there. So not only you do have the DB uh, ready to go, but also the full monitoring system. You can access those metrics through APIs. Okay, it's there. And you can interact with this DB through multiple ways. You can use the Cassandra drivers, if you like, I told you to use the driver and the Cassandra query language. Um, this, is, this would be the first part of the end zone. Uh, but what we want to do today is use as much as possible those API provided by Stargate. Yeah, great, it's ready. Jesper told us. Okay, um, so let's get running. So once the DB is in active mode, what we want you to do is go to um, just start with Cassandra, just to see that we do have a Cassandra DB running. So go to SQL console. It's starting. And there, first you can describe key spaces, just to list all the key spaces available for this Cassandra DB. And here you can see that you do have these free. So I can use free. And you know, I can select and I can describe space. And the only instruction that you can see here is how to create the key space. So as of now, no tables. So then, oh, use key space one. Oh, okay. I did not follow my own instruction telling me that I should use key space one. So you know what? I can go to 3db and here I can add a key space, key space one. And why do I do that? First, because I can create multiple kit space inside the same DB. And second, because I like to do copy paste. And if I change the key space name, I would have to change the DB name each time. And as a good developer, I'm lazy. So let's go back to the console and use key space one. Here I go. All right, what's, what's next? I will create a table using the Cassandra query language. So the table is video. Uh, and as you can see in a Cassandra table, you can have some type like you used to do on relational database, UID, text, timestamp. You can also have list or set as attributes of a table. 
So that's a good way to illustrate you how this works. You can also have maps, key value. Pretty easy when you want to deal with that. And one colon can be of a type you define. So here for the record, I created um, what we call user defined type, which is a, stru a structures named video format with uh, width and length. So let's create that. I can do while by one or all together. Okay, I created the type, then I create the table. Okay. And if I describe again my key space, now not only I do have my statement to create the key space, but as well the statement for uh, this object. I can query this table, but as of today, uh, nothing there. So the table is named videos. Okay, it's empty, that's expected still in the Cassandra query language, you can insert values, you know, insert into, so I will copy paste. So um, nothing much to say. Can I make that bigger? Yes, I can. Nothing much to say, uh, except uh, when you need to insert a list or a map or a set, there are some uh, dedicated format to know, like square bracket or curl bracket, depending on what you want to do. You, can, you do have also have ready to go functions like now or two timestamp, just to have the insert date. Um, and if I now again, as of now, I do have one record. I can also insert record without providing all the field as long as I provide all the values for my primary key, I'm good to go. And now I do have two records in the uh, tables. Yeah. Uh, and something that not a lot of people know, even uh, um, experienced Cassandra users, is you can, ins uh, you can read and write data in Cassandra with the JSON format out of the box. You insert into JSON and you insert a JSON. Still, <clears throat> with, this, with this JSON, you do have a schema. So is, it's not schema-less at all. Uh, and you need to uh, fit with the model. Or when you insert Cassandra, we just complain, uh, frame, I don't know this field, if you um, misspell this attribute name. It's JSON, but it's not schemaless. But still, if you only uh, like and work JSON, this is a way to do it. But it's not as flexible as a document or your DB would like to do. And I do have a solution for you today. OK, now if we look at this video table, you can see that I do have three records. All right, and you can retrieve uh, a video from its ID. So if I pick one ID, you can retrieve a video, select video, yeah. video ID. Well, and I do not provide any quote because I, it's not from, it's from fear of missing out. Sure, but not today. <laughs> All right, so you can retrieve um, a record from its ID because the ID is the primary key. Okay, so, all right, we do have a DB. We have seen how to interact with this DB using the Cassandra query language with some dedicated specificities of Cassandra, like dedicated uh, attributes text, list, set, map, or even create your own object. All right. So now I told you inside this Astra, Stargate is already there. Okay, so remember this Stargate proxy on top of Cassandra exposing multiple flavor of APIs. 
And so let's start with the REST API. The REST APIs will follow the same concept as Cassandra query language, expose as REST. Okay, so I go to connect. I would like to connect to my database and I will go to REST API, okay? To interact with the REST API and any API, what you need, you need a token, okay? No surprise, it could be O2, uh, API key, you know, you, I mean, if you attend this conference, you know all these token. So we will use uh, application token to create and generate a token. I will go to settings and I will generate the token. Because with this token, I will create tables, create schema and stuff like that. I would like to have as much privilege as possible, so no big deal, I'm using the database administrator. I will generate that token. It will give me client ID, client secret, and token. So I advise you to download the CSV, because like for um, AWS, once the CSV has been generated, now from the UI, the only thing you can access is client ID and you know, it's not enough. What you need to work with the API is really the GW2 token. So here is my token and I will copy this token in my clipboard and I will pass this token somewhere because I will keep reusing this token again and again by uh, going through the different APIs. All right, go back to connect go back to REST API and how do you like to use a REST API? Question for you. Yeah, you can use curl, but you can, you can use HTTP pi, which is a nice, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's a nice layer on top of HTTP just to, to get to simplify the document, but you may want to use the UI and luckily enough here in the, um, in the Astra, you do have, Swagger UI. So Swagger UI, and here you see all the endpoints available. So data, schema, and document. So what we call uh, REST is all about schema and data, is really using Cassandra the way we used to do nothing special. Uh, and then the document will be an innovation we will do right after this, okay. So working with REST API, we created our token, okay? We open the Swagger UI. So first things we can do from this Swagger UI is, okay, try to find an endpoint that, do not, that does not need any um, parameter. <laughs> this is what we tend to do when we uh, access a new API just to see what's happening. So one good is here, list the key space. So each time to use Swagger UI, if it's the first time, go to try out and here you will be asked for the token. So I will copy my, it's, it's still in my clipboard, but let's do it like that. And I will execute. And this is what we expect. We do have our own key space one and free that has created before with you all. Okay. Okay. So you can list key space. Very good. You can create key space. So let's create another key space altogether, create key space too. So in the Swagger UI, I will go to schema, everything related to schema. And because I do have the uh, admin privilege, I can try to see created key space. Okay, let's create that key space. So see, I do here have a sample. I will try out as always. Otherwise it's read only field paste my token that I keep in my, um, I kept in my uh, clipboard and I, I can be lazy, you know, I told you and use key space to replication factor three, because even on serverless, you do have the replication factor three. So Cassandra, NoSQL database, the data is distributed among multiple nodes and that has replicated multiple times. And the idea here is you can lose any of the Cassandra node. It's not a big deal. The service is still up. Okay, I execute. And that guy is happy. 201, uh, HTTP code created, okay? Uh, it's part of the body. It's also, 
be part of the header, you know, location. If you like the HTTP uh, standard, and I think you are, um, this is what it looks like. Okay, so now if I list again the key space, okay, nothing special, but you know, now our guys should be there. Okay, let me copy paste my token, but that also gives you some time to do. And now I do have my guys. What I did? Oh, schema key space. Oh, so I do have a list key space and I do have another uh, list key space. So I do have my free key space replication factor three from Europe. And we created a key space one replication factor three. And I do have my key space two over here. Pretty good. With default replication. Great. That's pretty cool. Okay. All right. Um, what about now creating a table inside the key space? Uh, the, the same things I did with uh, the Cassandra query language. So I will find the create table uh, endpoint and I will create a table with first name, last name, email, and color. Three, uh, four fields, uh, all text. And my primary key will be composed in two parts. Partition key, first name, and a clustering key, a last name. I won't go too much into the detail with the Cassandra data modeling, but it, a primary key in Cassandra, which code for unicity of a record, is composed with partition key. Partition key that will help you distribute the data among among your data among multiple nodes evenly, and clustering key everything you need to sort your data. Okay, keep moving, keep moving. Okay, so let's create that table. It's part of the schema and I will find something, create a, create a table, where are you? It's a post, so it's green. Let's see, try it out. So key space name, I will use key space two, the one we created together. I will use, okay, so be careful tends to, that's why girl, you are okay. Always tends to put you back to uh, square bracket, no, to curl bracket. Okay, and the token as usual, copy pasting from here. All right, I do have my nice token. Now, took, 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 took. The tables user has been created. Okay. All right. And so we are using the rest part of the API. Okay. And now I, if I want to insert something in this table, I will now insert a row. So where is my, add a, it's, not, it's no more schema. I want to put some data in there. So let's add a row. So as you can see, key space, key space name. Oh, you first need my token as usual. Out okay, key space name, key space two. We just created that guy, table name users, and for the value, look at that. I need to provide columns and all these uh, key value, key value, key value. And here I do have key value, key value, key value. Okay, well, I can also copy paste everything, but. It's the same, okay? And I will execute that. And success, it should be okay. And now with the REST API, we have done exactly the same as uh, the Cassandra query language. And during the time you are doing that, I can show you again in the console, now use key space two, just to show you. Uh, and select uh, what's inside the table users, what you just did from users typo here. And as you can see, we created some record using the REST API. So first is, you know, now it's pretty cool to access this Cassandra DB with uh, all the JavaScript and mobile app. It's pretty cool to have the REST API. Okay. 
But ISO features with REST API, even if it's cool, you can do even better. So if I move on just a little bit with my slide, and if you want to use now the document API, okay? So Cassandra is a colon-oriented database, so it's pretty easy to do colon-oriented uh, workload. You can do key value also pretty easily. The key will be your primary key and value will be the colon you simply want to, to update. Time series database, Cassandra is very famous to be uh, super, super performant for writes. And so it fits very well the time series way to insert data and to retrieve the data. And graph database, not part of OSS Cassandra, but at DataStax, we have created uh, a graph engine on top of Cassandra and it's part of DataStax enterprise product. But no shameless plug today. Today we are only dealing with uh, things that is delivered for you as open source. Apache Cassandra is open source. Stargate is open source. Okay. Um, what you want to do is uh, access the data as a JSON document. And even if insert JSON is available at Cassandra level, you would like to be able to do schema less. So of course you can think, yeah, so I will define the field as text and I will insert just uh, my a long string, which is a JSON and Cassandra wouldn't care. That would work. But what about updating only part of this uh, document? It's not that easy. So to cope with that, um, the data stacks engineer came with the idea of document shredding. So as the name stated, we simply split um, all the a document into multiple rows. And you can imagine a table and each column is one level of deep of one level of depth inside the JSON document. And with that, you can have a JSON document insert as multiple rows, but part of the same partition in Cassandra. So if I want to sort A, B, C like that, okay, each time the key will be our document ID, level zero, P0 is A, okay, level one, P1 and value one. That's coding the one over here. And now if I want to code C2, you can see C, it's a P1, uh, P0. There is no extra uh, nested JSON object. So this guy is null and the value is two. And so if now I, I select from Cassandra providing the key, I retrieve all these row in a single call very, very fast because they are all stored on the same node and I retrieve a document uh, super easily. You can do the same with um, list, set, and here you do, you do have a sample. But hey, enough with theory. Let's get rolling. Now let's use this document API. So now if you go back to the Swagger UI, we will go up and see all these documents. So what can we do with this document? So first, let's create a namespace. So this is just a convention. A namespace is totally like a key space. Simply put in your namespace, you can only have a um, document. And what Stargate will do is create exactly the expected schema to store one document. So creating a name space, let's get rolling. I will create a namespace one. So create a namespace, I will find the green one. Uh, create a namespace, let's get rolling. Try it out and I will provide this value namespace one. And I will again copy this token. Here you go. Let's go execute. Okay, I do have my namespace. Inside a namespace, you will create what we call collection. Okay, it's not tables, it's simply collection. Oh yeah, I could have list the namespace and uh, namespace one is part of it. I will move. I would like to create, oh, 
ah, I need a commit. You know, we need first to create a collection. So inside a namespace, you will have some collection. Let's create first our collection. So I'm going to create collection. And it should be simple enough for you to create that collection without the tutorial. So token, let's provide the token. Namespace ID, we created the namespace, so it's called namespace one. And for the value, it's a JSON and you expect a name. And so uh, what name should we put for these? Uh, okay, what does the document look like? Uh, it's a video, so let's call that as well video. Okay, let's do it. Videos as well. And I will execute. Okay, and I do have my created code 201 stated that these collection now exist. Uh, let's see if I can list the collection. Okay, list connection, try it out, provide my token and the namespace ID. I think it was namespace one. And so our video, okay, is collection available. All right. So now with this collection, we can start creating some uh, document. Um, if we try to create a document and the collection does not exist, the connection will be created. Uh, but you know, that just me <laughs> wanted to show you namespace collection document, just to do the parallel with uh, key space table record, no, no, no. namespace collection document. Okay, so how to create a new document? So it should be green, uh, create, create, create a new document. Where are you? Um, create a new document, here you are. All right, so try it out. Uh, my token, okay, still the same. Namespace ID on, oh, we know it's namespace one. Okay, collection ID, I told you it's video. And then for the body, it's schemaless now. So you can insert whatever you like. It's document oriented DB. Uh, here they, we put some video ID. It's like, you know, video. So it's really, we try to fit the same um, format as for exercise one, where we were using uh, Cassandra query language. Okay, I will execute that. And yada, 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 this document has been created with this document ID. And you know what? I will copy this document ID somewhere because I would like to try some kind of find document by ID, someone you like to do. So find a document by its ID. Let's see, document ID, update, get a document, okay. So try it out. So my token, okay, namespace ID, namespace one, namespace, collection ID, videos, document ID, the one we just retrieved. Here I go. I can put some uh, where colon just to say, oh no, I um, I want to provide uh, this document ID only if the value is that. So these where clause with where clause field and paging is available both for find by ID and find all just to provide the where clause. So let's execute that. And I do have my document, email, format, frame. Okay, pretty happy with that. Uh, let's try, can I do a where close? It's document ID. Yeah, definitely some commit. Yeah. Okay. I'm pretty sure I've updated that, okay. Retrieve the document, we did that. Uh, and search for document by properties. So let's go document, uh, find, okay, find document, list document. Where are you guy? Took, 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 took something like search document in a collection. Yeah, that's cool. This is what it looked like. 
token. Namespace. Namespace. On collection ID videos. Where? Okay, so now this is the, it's not tricky, but this is what you need to be aware of. This is how you shape a where clause. Okay, so <clears throat> attribute, and this is the equals value. Okay, that's just uh, something to know. And boom, I've retrieved <clears throat> the document with a where clause. Okay, so that's it for document API. So you can see create, read, update, delete, search, and now with document serverless. So it's pretty, uh, it's you know pretty easy to do now. No need to worry anymore about the uh, schema. Last but not least, <clears throat> we also want to do GraphQL. So let's go back to connect. Now go to GraphQL and see the tools to play with GraphQL is also embedded in Astra. So open in a new tab. Here we go. I will close Swagger UI for now. Okay, first things to do is, a, oh, is again to provide your authentication token. So click on the bottom and copy paste your authentication over here. And you know what? We will do the same as the two other languages, creating a key space and inserting some values. So going there, I will first create a key space. <clears throat> so the neat thing with uh, GraphQL is you do have your specification there. So you know what you can do. So queries are for read, mutation for write. And what we want to do is create a key space. So I will create a key space and here it explain you how to create a key space. So on the left part, it's a mutation. I will create a key space and I provide the value. So now the key space here is called library. I execute that and I get my uh, key space created. All right, moving on. Took, 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 took. Now I will create a table. So it's a second uh, mutation available uh, here. So create table, you see over here. So here I provide values, table name, partition keys, and I can run that. Okay. So now I do have a first table called books and a second table called author. So in the same mutation, you can uh, have multiple statements in a way. We created two tables uh, in one call here. Expected outputs. Now let's work with this uh, table we just created. So here you can see that I'm working with GraphQL schema. So like for the Swagger UI, I'm in the schema part. I would like to go to the data part to interact with my data. So I will move to the second tab, GraphQL, okay? And by default here, GraphQL is set up with system. I would like to move that to library because the key space we created was called library. And then I should be able to insert those books like that here. Okay, like insert books. Because if I go in doc for the library, oh, you know what? Oh, you got an error. And why did I get an error? Because I changed endpoint from schema to library and I did not provide my token. So this is totally expected. So now if I give you my uh, token, now you are happy and you are able to discover all the method availables. And here you go, insert book, delete books. And with that, I should be able to insert those two books and uh, retrieve books like that. Just, I would like now to retrieve only Bobby Dick. Okay, and see. I can say I would like title and author, and if I only want the author, I can simply shape my uh, I can simply shape my query. And as you can see, the GraphQL or the GraphQL playground uh, provides some uh, not only the specification but also some compilation for you to create those queries or mutation. So I find out pretty useful. And so with that, you did some create, read, update, delete with 
Cassandra query language with REST API, with document API, and with GraphQL. So with the few minutes remaining, I will simply give you extra resources. Like, OK, I gave you very nice APIs. Maybe you don't want to learn all the endpoints. Maybe you simply want to have a client ready to go to interact with us with this target. Um, and so we are building those SDK for you. So Astra SDK in Java, Astra GS, wrapping all this call, um, and also some Python tool called HTTPPy. So Astra HTTPPy that will help you shaping the query uh, to uh, invoke these uh, REST endpoints. If you like this kind of workshop, my team is running weekly workshop twice a week live as of today, and you can still uh, ask questions on the YouTube chat and such. Uh, so go to datastack.com slash workshops, and you will see what's coming uh, for the next weeks. And the uh, YouTube channel is called Datastacks Developers, and we love you to subscribe there and see what's coming. We also have this Discord room with more than 9,000 people already there. Uh, what we call the Fellowship of the Rings. So if you do have a question on Cassandra, don't go to Stack Overflow anymore. Go there, bit.ly slash Cassandra dash workshop, and you will get a one-on-one -on -one conversation with us. Uh, also, um, we love your feedback. So if you try this API Astra and would like some things to improve, uh, come back to us on the Fellowship of the Rings to get your feedback. Also in Astra UI, there is a feedback button just at the top for you to leave a comment. And with that, I'm done for today. So if you want to follow me, this is my coordinates on LinkedIn, Twitter, and GitHub. 